Illuminati in disguise. I've come to Washington DC, capital of the world's richest and most powerful nation. But how much of its power lies with the Illuminati infiltrators of the Bilderberg Group? American free press journalist Jim Tucker has battled the Bilderbergers for most of his life. He also battles those who don't share his less than flattering view of them. What the hell do you mean, innocuous group? You think they're getting together to play pinochle? If you had the brains God promised the groundstone, you'd be all over this damn story. You're a journalistic whore. Bye. Bilderberg's motivation is to control uh, the entire world. They're drunk with power. And they see themselves as masters of the globe. It's their plantation. We're their slaves and the secrecy with which the Bilderbergers surround themselves generates endless suspicion. You have the people who are making public policy outside the purview of the public. And it really makes a mockery out of the idea of freedom and democracy. A founder member of the Bilderberg Group is one-time Labour Chancellor of the Exchequer, Dennis Healy. What did he have to say about its obsession with secrecy? It wasn't secret, it was private. We didn't want the press there because we wanted people to be able to talk freely. Jim Tucker has tried to infiltrate Bilderberger meetings year after year. But of course every now and then some journalists would find there was a conference and uh, sometimes try to get in and of course he was thrown out. And of course, they were people of utter unimportance. Uh, Dennis Healy is cute. He is real cute. They don't meet to play pinochle for three days. If they didn't have impact on public policy, they wouldn't bother meeting. Absolute bunkum. I never heard such nonsense. <laughs> Tony Blair attended the Bilderberg meeting before he became prime minister. Bill Clinton attended the Bilderberg meeting before he became president of the United States. And it's significant that they attended before. The before, meeting. so it's kind of like they're they're vetted to become to to be allowed to become the leaders of, of their nation. That is utter bunkum again. They decide who will go to war, where the wars will be, how long the wars will last, who will finance the wars. Bunkum. I've never heard such crap in my whole life. But Galen Ross doesn't think it's bunkum or crap. He's compiled a book listing the names of the secret rulers of the world. It includes the Bilderbergers. I published the first edition of Who's Who of the Elite. Hmm. Dennis Healy? Yes. He's in there? Absolutely. Interesting. It becomes absolutely obvious that they control everything of, of significance throughout the entire world. <laughs> Absolute crap. So how do the Illuminati control the world? Well, they, it, it really starts, uh, as I said earlier, in the first Bilderberg meeting where they talked about the creation of the European Union. Since then, Galen tells me, the Illuminati have been busy creating the African Union, the American Union, and lots of other unions as well. He says they're stepping stones to their great goal of the Global Union, which will come into being around 2010. So it's all already in place, you say? It's all in place, and it will be complete domination of the entire world, politically and economically. Uh, there'll be no sovereignty anywhere. Hartford, again, still no Mr. A.
going in somewhere, let's just find it. I'll go with you a sec. Hello? Okay, change, change, change your plan then, yeah? Okay. Um, well, um, hold on a sec. Yeah, you might want to turn the camera off. Yeah, you're getting sort of paranoid, I guess. He's, he's, he's got cold feet. Um, so, um, From what he said, I think I'll, I'll be able to talk him into rescheduling it. So I'm, I'm sorry to have taken all, all the way out here for nothing, but um, I think it's going to have to be another day. Well, maybe I'll never meet Mr. A. Maybe I'll never meet any member of the Illuminati. But as soon as I start doubting the Illuminati's existence, I learn that it's signs and symbols are all around us. If only we know where to look. My search for the elusive Illuminati is proving far more complex than I'd hoped. But occasionally, I'm told, we are allowed glimpses of them through their secret, sometimes satanic, signs. Make no mistake about it, these men believe that ritual, hand signs, symbols bring power. Uh, and, and when you get to that stage, I believe you become demon-possessed. And these demonic signs and symbols of the Illuminati are all around us. Especially, it seems, in downtown Austin. I've been told that this building holds a kind of special significance for the Illuminati, because the Illuminati apparently worship owls, and they say this building looks a bit like an owl. I'll be honest, I can't really see it myself, but I'm not getting much of an owl vibe from this. The owl that I can't see is Molech again, named after an ancient Middle Eastern god. So, what is this building? Well, it's a new building in Austin. It's the Frost Bank building. Uh, but the two circles on each side of the beak and then the uh, crown, that's the crest of the owl's horns. It's got the eyes, it's got the beak. It's an owl. And uh, it's kind of like the Illuminati mascot, one of their mascots. The skull and bones is one. The other is the owl. The Illuminati come out of kind of the secret mystery architecture schools, so they use architecture as a way to communicate their views. So basically, this is a giant idol to Moloch. Really? This is an idol? Yes. And so this is kind of how they communicate to us. It's hidden in plain view, if it is hidden at all. And is it, I mean, in a way, from what I've kind of learned this far about the Illuminati, it's kind of quite fitting that it's a hidden thing that is amongst us. Hidden amongst us, that's what they love, because the profane can't see it because we're unconscious. But why owls? What, I mean, that's, that's kind of why. Well, we always hear that, oh, it's the, you know, the god of wisdom, you know, going back to the Greeks. The owl also sees in the dark.